Two more corals. That's all we got left. Two more to go. Hey, wonderful day to all of my fellow and future hobbyists out there. My name is Matthew. I am your BRS beginner guru. I think the first eight corals on this list were amazing. And if you're thinking right now, Matthew, what eight corals are you talking about? Check out the two previous videos where we did beginner corals number one through five and beginner corals six, seven, and eight. But today we're going to finish off my top 10 choices for beginner corals with number nine and number 10. Coral number nine is Catalophilia jardiniae. I really should learn these Latin names, but honestly, I never hear it referred to as Catalophilia. Wait, I, I, can't, I can't remember it. Catalophilia jardiniae. I wanted to say jardine which is like some weird French-Spanish pronunciation, so I had to look it up. But I don't know any hobbyists out there who refer to it as Catalophilia jardinii. We just call it in the hobby the elegance coral. The elegance coral is a large polyp stony coral with some beautiful, long, fleshy polyps. Color variations, we're talking greenish, pink. I wrote down this word here called pinkle. I'm not sure what I was going for with that. But you also have purple and you have white tipped elegance corals as well. These are slow growers. They can keep this very small skeleton structure and just get a larger and larger polyp. Super beautiful, but very slow growers. The first care tip is flow and we're talking really low to high. Somewhere in medium is probably the best. You might have to do a little bit of experimentation with your elegance coral. If the flow is too high, it will likely pull in a lot more and the goal is to make it spread out as much as possible. It's a relatively low light coral. I'd say somewhere around 100 par, but you can really go anywhere from probably 50 to 150 par. I definitely recommend feeding this coral since it's such a slow grower and the corals need a little bit of encouragement to come out. Feeding one to two times a week can definitely encourage some really vibrant colors and maybe even help it grow faster. They are not super aggressive, but elegant corals have been known to eat a passing snail. So just be on the lookout and if they get a good snail treat, the only thing you might have to do is just pick up a few more snails. Definitely want to put these lower down on the aquascape and these can get huge. One single large elegance polyp might have a small stony structure, but its diameter can literally get up to a foot. I mean, that's the goal, right? Up to a foot. So make sure you give it plenty of space to grow, or if you place it somewhere near other corals, just know that over time you might have to move those other corals. Elegance corals, I, I hesitated to add these to the list because they can definitely be much more sensitive to water chemistry. They do need somewhat decent alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium levels, just like other LPS corals do and also low amounts of nitrates and phosphates for their growth as well. But depending on what part of the world they come from, some seem to do really well and others just seem to fade away and die. Typically, the Australian variants are much more hardy than others. If you're looking to build a budget coral tank, elegance corals unfortunately are not gonna be the ones for you because they are quite spendy. We're talking the low hundreds to several hundred dollars. I think elegance corals are probably some of the most beautiful corals out there, and they are definitely in my top five corals. They're large fleshy polyps, that kind of greenish hue. It really looks good under blue lights. But would I recommend it as the first coral you get? Probably not. Try out some of the other corals on this list first, Get those water parameters stable before spending the several hundred dollars on an elegance coral. Our 10th coral on the list are all of the different types of branching euphelia coral. We're talking three specific species from the genus euphelia, and I'm gonna have to read these out. We're gonna do a little experiment here. I'm gonna read them out before I look it up, and then after I look it up. Here is how I would pronounce these three species before looking up how to pronounce them. Parancora. Parancora euphelia, Paradivisa euphelia, Glabrescens, gl Glabrescens? Glabrescens euphelia. I'm gonna go look them up, hold on one sec. Well, that pretty much <laughs> didn't help at all. But let's try it one more time here. Euphelia parancora, Euphelia paradivisa, and Euphelia glabrescens. More commonly known, of course, as the branching torch coral, the branching hammer coral, and the branching frog spawn coral. Euphelia corals are large polyp stony corals. There aren't a ton of colorations, but enough to satisfy pretty much any hobbyist out there. We're talking pink, green, an inverse, some sort of pink tipped, a purple tipped, speckled neon. So really we're talking the pinks and the greens, but they are gorgeous. They grow 
quite slowly. So don't expect to be able to buy one head and then a year later frag off several new heads. You may have several new heads of growth, but they will grow extremely slowly. Euphelia prefer flow somewhere from low to medium. If it's too high, you'll notice that the euphelia will pull in their tentacles. But if you find this sweet spot somewhere between low and medium, not a direct hit from the wave maker, the euphelia will amaze you with just how far their tentacles can puff out. Definitely on the lower lighting side, probably somewhere around 75, but they can definitely acclimate probably anywhere from 50 to 150. If you are gonna put them in that higher par range, you're probably gonna wanna lower the lights and acclimate them over several weeks. I've tried supplementally feeding a lot of my euphelia, but they don't ever really seem to grab onto the food. I could be wrong here, but I'm gonna say they're primarily gonna get most of the nutrition from the light. If you did wanna supplementally feed, I'd probably recommend turning off all the pumps and the wave makers and feeding directly towards their mouth. Maybe they'll eat some of it, I'm just not sure. They are definitely on the aggressive side. They have these long sweeper tentacles that will come out and will sting near my corals. Although you can place euphelia with other euphelia. I've actually found some success with a euphelia garden, which includes torch corals, hammer corals, and frog spawn corals but sometimes the torch corals don't play as nicely as they should. Definitely put euphelia corals lower down in the tanks and maybe on the sides more where the par level is gonna be less and keep them at least six inches away from other sensitive corals, especially your SPS or small polyp stony corals. These are probably the most finicky corals on our list, but what they really need for water chemistry is consistency. Like other stony corals, they're definitely gonna need decent alkalinity, calcium and magnesium levels but unlike other corals, they don't do well with quick swings. So keeping everything as stable as possible is really important. A quick note of Bene here, there's this thing called brown jelly, which seems to really affect euphelia corals. And it looks just like brown jelly. And what happens is that some sort of bacterial infection will infect a head of this coral. And all of a sudden, within a day, it will basically carve out all the tentacles, turning them to this brown jelly. If that happens to you, you can often pull out the whole thing, frag off that one head and then do some sort of antibacterial and iodine dip, but sometimes it just doesn't help and they brown jelly and it can be super frustrating. A decade ago, these were super cheap when I first started in the hobby and I was like, why do people not want these? They were so inexpensive. That is no longer the case, especially some really hot torch corals out there. People will pay $1,000 for a single head. You can still find single heads of euphelia corals for under $100, but these can definitely range to several hundred dollars as well. Overarching thoughts here, euphelia corals are my number one favorite coral, except when they brown jelly because it's super frustrating when they brown jelly and it seems to happen out of nowhere. Euphelias have some of the best water movement out there. Maybe not necessarily the most beautiful colorations, but they make up for it with the texture and the shape of their long polyp. So definitely some of my favorites out there. Not the easiest to keep, they need a stable home. So until you have some stability, try some of the other corals on this list, except for the elegance coral, but some of the other corals on this list, and then you can move into euphelia coral. Just a quick note, be sure to only buy branching euphelia coral. Never buy a wall euphelia coral because if something goes wrong with that wall, it will kill the entire wall, where if something goes wrong with one of the branching euphelias, you can often remove that branch and save the rest. All right, Matthew, all right, Matthew, I'll buy, I'll buy. I'll go out and buy some of these beginner corals, you might be thinking to yourself, but I bring them home, and then what the heck do I do? That's next episode. Thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.